Welcome to Family Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I come with wings that have no need for air transportation, yet I hardly use them. What is this duality? Well, we have feet and we still need cars to drive around. Fair point. Yes. Although we'd probably all be better health if we didn't rely on the cars. Uh, yeah, but we look cooler, man. Like that drift. Ooh. Uh, but drifting aside, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 7, Episode 22, Once Upon a Zeppelin. In this episode, Twilight Sparkle and her family, Cruise Vacation is actually a team vacation where ponies have paid for the privilege of spending time with her and she must please both her family and the cruise attendees. So yeah, this is the interesting one. Hmm. Somehow I feel like this hits close to home for us somehow. In some ways it does. In in some ways you can, if you've been at a convention and you've seen people just following the show staff around the talent and, and they have been uh, very cool about that. And in my case, every now and again, I'll, someone who's really happy to see a member of the community but is maybe a little unsure of themselves. You, you can see that too. This whole episode here could just be us talking about the whole convention scene and whatnot. Like, that'll be fun. But in all honesty, we got a review to do. Maybe we can do it as a side story. I don't know. It'll be interesting. But let's get into first impressions. So, Silver, what do you think of this episode, man? You know, it's been a while since we had a Twilight episode, just a Twilight episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it honestly feels like she's becoming less and less involved in the story over time, which is, I, she's my third favorite character, so that's a little sad. So I'm happy that the entire Sparkle family gets a, uh, gets a moment to shine in this. Even Cadence, who I normally criticize as not being very proactive, has a great moment. Uh, that's like, oh, yes, this is what I'd always hoped you'd be. <laughs> More of this, please. Yep, yep. And Shining armor comes out a little bit worse for the wear on this one. <laughs> yeah, poor him. And yeah, I think I know the moment you're talking about. And I, I felt bad for the character Star Chaser. I, I understood and empathized with him. And I, and I very much liked the lead antagonist. Yeah. The, I thought he was a lot of fun. Yeah, the lead antagonist was a bunch of fun. Like, <laughs> he, if you didn't really follow the trailer or whatever it is he came out of nowhere <laughs> and yet the moment you hear his voice you know <laughs> it's like oh god it's him <laughs> but still but still uh is that all silver yep that's my first impression uh, all right all right all right and as for me this episode was a bunch of fun like i remember watching it before and feeling like how do i put this it hit close to home where when I saw uh, Star Chaser, it's like, ooh, oh, I, oh man, I, I could totally relate with Star Chaser, and I hope I wasn't like him, and I hope I wasn't. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> but besides that, the whole episode where how Twilight took the bullet for everyone, just everyone could be happy, and all she wanted to do is do something at the end. But uh, you know what? That would be spoiler. I, I highly enjoyed this episode. This episode was a, fun, a bunch of fun. So, anywho, let's head into the review. If you guys at home have not watched this episode yet, uh, well, pause here and we'll wait. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the episode. So, let's get into it. So, we see our lead hero doing office work. Yes, doing the remedial task of writing letters and whatnot. Yay! Till she got a letter. Yes, said letter was from her mum or parents. Yay, saying that they want a family vacation and, well, she's invited too. She's really happy about it too. Yay. Although here's a question. How do her parents have access to Dragonfire uh, mailing? Most letters come through the post, but Twilight gets to scroll via Spike's burps. Okay, there's multiple answer for this one. And I... I one of the few things I'm going to fan here, right, is it's a very limited spell for very limited people. Celestia's one, Luna's one, and Twilight's parents. So in all technicality, just three. And it could be for Ember too, who knows? I'm not sure myself. I, uh, I just sort of laugh. It's like, where do you keep magical dragon fire when it's not, you know, in the dragon? Hmm. You know what? 
the, another theory is there's a dragon at the post office. <laughs> okay, now you got me thinking Flintstones. Meh, it's a living. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. But anywho, to this, Spike mentions that, you know, Twy, you need a vacation. How about you go and I handle everything? Go. Get, 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 get. Don't make me get the newspaper. But I do love that uh, Twilight says, Spike, this is a family uh, reunion, and you're as much of my part of my family as anyone. It's like, yes! It's taken a long time to acknowledge this, but yes. Yes. He's a part of our family. <laughs> Mutual respect. Huzzah! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, man. But still, Spike here, he appreciates the sparkle, and being part of family and you know what let me take the bullet for this one for you Twy. i can do this you just go have fun and relax sparkle 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 hell yeah sparkle 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 but uh, we go to the next scene and yay they're at cantalot they're boarding the zeppelin and everybody's excited nightlight mentioned uh, how his mom is an adrenaline junkie and wants to do exciting fun stuff and while he's just into the bingo uh, Shining Armor and Cadence are there too. And Twilight says, hey, um, bro, aren't you prone to air sickness? And Shining Armor just says, nah, man, dude, we're on a boat. So it's totally different. <laughs> Honestly, I was on a, a boat with my brother and he got seasick. The rolling of the waves, the, the sense of the disorientation, it's brutal. Mm, yep. I remember she, I remember you mentioning this. And if I'm not mistaken, this was for your family vacation, right? Two years ago? Yes. Yes. I remember that one. And if I do remember right, uh, Game Theory did a theory about this specific reason about Bioshock um, Infinite thing where the city in the sky wouldn't work because of how we um, human body and stuff. Like, it's, it's a nice watch. It explains a bit, but eh, it's up to you. But anywho, since everyone is on the Zeppelin, uh, they get to, uh, flying, and yay! It's fun! Uh, the, whatchamacallit, this MC or the captain announced, um, every, is everyone ready? Like, yeah, you're, you're ready, so let's go! Woohoo! And of course, you, you hear that voice on the loudspeakers. You're like, wait, is that? It can't be. We'll we'll get a reveal soon enough. Soon enough. So the Sparkle family got a cabin all to themselves and try to have everything planned from bingo to jumping, falling out of a barrel in uh, Niagara Falls, something like that? Yeah, there's there's a long history behind that. Someone did write a barrel down Niagara Falls. Didn't Houdini do that? Let's see here. Doing just a quick search. It doesn't sound like a terribly uh, smart thing to do. Mm-hmm, yeah. Let's see here. Annie Taylor was the first person to conquer the, ball, the Niagara Falls in a barrel. After climbing inside her airtight wooden frame, the air pressure was compressed to 30 PSI with a bicycle pump. Ooh. The bruised and battered Annie made it. She expected fame and fortune, but she died in poverty. Oh, wow. Well, uh... Oh, let's see here. 1911, the, f- the infamous Bobby Leach plunged over the falls in a steel barrel. Ooh. Bobby broke both kneecaps and his jaw during the daring event. Years later, while touring in New Zealand, Bobby split an orange peel and died from complications due to gangrene. Ooh. Oh, he, sli- he slipped on an orange peel. Ouch. Uh, these don't end well. So, yeah, I'm going to say going over Niagara Falls in a barrel did not work out. Ouch. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know what? PSA, don't jump. <laughs> don't go over a waterfall in a barrel. Yes. And yet we make jokes about it. We actually, uh, I don't know, we seem to glorify it, even though it, it demands a terrible, terrible price. Mm, you know what? It's... Uh, I don't know. It's one of those situations where we're smarter now. <laughs> yeah, you think so, but in many ways we're not. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. That's why Niagara Falls is much more secured. Yes. To keep the stupid out. <laughs> oh, but I digress. Yes, but anywho, back on topic. After revealing the plan and Twilight penciling in uh, 
her mum's uh, wants to go over the barrel, um, sorry, go over the falls, she mentioned that she wants to watch the stars, the northern stars fall. It only happens at night and whatnot. So she pencils that in near the end. So starting earlier on, they got nothing to plan. And guess what? The announcer mentioned, take a tour. And they do. And yay, we get Shining Armor doing that famous scene in that one movie and seeing how he can fly like a pegasi and whatnot and suddenly getting really, really airsick. Uh, turning green. And this has led to, well, something hotly contested, at least for me. Mm-hmm. I, put, I did a video just on the episode and asked, with all the Shining Armor we've seen, the emotional outbursts, the... Uh, the n- nervous breakdowns, and now airsick. How did he make it to captain of the royal guard? Well, it takes more than that. I mean, when you really take a look, see the situation about airsickness is very situational. So probably he worked his way up to become the captain through hard work and dedication. And yeah, I mean, being a nerd, being very emotional about all that stuff is normal. But when it comes to work, he'll he'll be very serious. It's just that most of his opponents are super strong. Discord is a good example. And this came up. <laughs> Norman, you kind of jumped the gun on me here, but sorry. <laughs> people have brought up a World War Two hero who, in his civilian life, you'd never ever know uh, that he would have that in him you know he was just a very different person outside of conflict so i i can roll with that idea but like you say shining armor he's been bested and and depowered so many times he's kind of become a punchline in that regard and it's sad when the captain of the guard is made a joke i feel like the show has relied on this so heavily that there's nothing i don't view him as reliable anymore I'm not sure he can really hold his own. And I could it'd be really grand to see him at least hold the line while Twilight, while Twilight and Friends uh, save the day. That would be fun to see. But in all honesty, when it comes to most of Shining Armor's failures, it's versus opponents that are way beyond him. Um, a good example like I mentioned before was Discord. Tyrek is another one. And Chrysalis because of... Well, I, I I don't know. Chrysalis was a bit difficult in comparison because of the situation that he was in. So let's just say that was a sucker punch. So eh, three out of three, not that good. What about Thorax, though? I mean, Changeling appears in the throne room in front of his daughter and he can't catch the, the Changeling. It's like, dude. <laughs> It's right there. It's going all blah, 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 blah. <laughs> encase it in a shield. Uh, you know, keep it in the bubble or something. Make it a bubble boy. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the moops, the bars, the moops, the bars. <laughs> uh, Only Seinfeld fans will get that joke. <laughs> and you know what? I, I ain't gonna defend Shining and Armor anymore because, in all honesty, we haven't seen much of him yet in show. By the way, I'm um, not in the comics because in the comics he's shown to be. Very fun. A very fun guy. I just would love for him to get some positive showing in said show. Because otherwise, the poor boy is just stuck. Yeah, maybe in Season 8. We'll get some of that in Season 8. I hope so. So, anywho, um, after taking Flurry Heart to the, back to the room, because, well, Flurry Heart's not feeling too well. Ooh. <laughs> uh, we get to see everyone being very highly excited about the two princesses being there. It's like... This whole thing was set up for the two princes just to be there in one spot. Mm, I wonder. And that mask that little filly is wearing of Cadence. Yep. He gads. Are there t shirts? The t shirts are cool. T shirts. Oh, let's see. I'm looking for pictures of t shirts. Got the wigs. It's oh, yeah. quite terrifying. Yeah. I don't know. Well, one, I'll never have to worry about people wearing a wig of me. <laughs> but two, oh, there's the, there. Now I see the picture of the t shirts. Woo! Actually, those are decent. Mm-hmm. And considering I sell Silver Quill t-shirts at it when I'm vending at conventions, I've got no right to criticize <laughs> there. Yes. So, merchandising aside, it seems like the, um, the Sparkle family, or the parents at least, are very open to getting their picture taken and whatnot. 
And Twilight had enough of this and decides to see the captain of the screws. And guess what? Who? <laughs> Surprise! It's Iron Will! <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, wow. Oh, somebody slapped in on a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Iron Will says that um, he's the captain and this is a team cruise. A princess team. Da, 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 da. Yes. That's got to break some sort of laws. Not really, because here's, here's the thing. Um, before we... Sorry, I, I think we jumped the gun a bit earlier on, but Twilight asked her parents about how did they get the cruise ship? Uh, how did they want the entry and whatnot? And they say that, hey, um, we won. And if you're getting a free family cruise, you don't ask questions. You sign on a dotted line. And it seems that said dotted line is, yes, you get a free cruise. But at the same time, I, Velvet, uh, Twilight Velvet and Nightlight agreed to our daughter being the team for this cruise. So, yes. <laughs> Okay, if I, I don't want to get super real world, but I don't think they can sign for her as she's legally an adult. Yes, I know, but, but still. <laughs> but, but meanwhile, I, I also just wonder if they're going to say, oh, well, we helped this nice Nigerian prince. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, but still, I'm um, back on topic. Twilight Sparkle's not really happy about the situation, and uh, Caden says, you know what? It's time to turn the ship around. And Twilight says, you know, stop, 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 stop. Iron Will, I have a counter argument for you. Let my family do what they want to do without any hindrance, and I'll be the entertainment. And Iron Will agrees. Yay, they all agree. So, yay, uh, Twilight Sparkle has to do some PR work for the ship while the family do what they want to do. Good deal, right? Mm, you think? But, oh no, things don't go the way you expect. Yep. Especially for this first thing that Twilight needs to do, which is the grand prize raffle. So, raffle, raffle, raffle. Pick out a name out of a barrel. And sit barrel winner name is Star Trekker. Yay. Which, if that isn't a reference in part to a Trekkie, <laughs> it's a marvelous coincidence. I know. I know. And I'll just say this. I find this little guy... He was frustrating at first, but then you, you grow to like him because you recognize why he's so nervous. Mm -hmm. And there's no malice in his actions. He's he's as much a victim of Iron Will's scam as the uh, Sparkle family. And if I remember right, I was straight away enamored with this guy. I was in that situation where, oh my god, this could be me. Oh god. Like, being close to your idol and whatnot and trying to not lose face. And trying to keep it cool, uh, yet shivering in your boots and whatnot, like you're close to your idol. So it's like, play it cool, play it cool. Hi! <coughs> uh, but you know, they say never meet your heroes, but I think that's a mistake. I think you should meet your heroes and just realize that they're people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people are, you know, they'll, they'll want to hang, they'll want to talk, they'll want a little bit of, you know, personal space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Folks, always remember, you are as human as these as these celebrities or internet personalities or fandom uh, faces, what, what have you. You do not have less value than the people you admire. True. If that. anything, the, the fact you both, you connect over something that you mutually admire, treat one another as equals. Yeah, um, like how I always say is treat others how you want to be treated. Ah, the golden rule, or if you want to get really classic, the categorical imperative. <laughs> yes. So, Star Trek here is an honorary member for the Sparkle family for one day, and he's ecstatic about it. Yet shy and whatnot, but still, he is very excited. And hey, the uh, nightlight here uh, treats him buddy buddy like part of family. So, yeah, he's very excited about it. He gets to play bingo with nightlight while. Twilight Sparkle becomes the announcer. And wow, um, I don't know. I mean, to me, for this situation here, Twilight should have just focused on the game and not worry about her dad. Well, I think she's doing all this for her family. So I, I guess that's where her focus might lie. Oh, true, that, true, that. And yeah, um, not hearing what her dad has to say, um, Star Trekker here uh, just goes up close and tells Twilight about it. And wow, 
either he's a ninja or he has some kind of dampering spell on his hooves. He's got magical fanboy powers. Da, 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 da. Oh, by the way, he's an earth pony. Like what? <laughs> well, why not? Earth ponies can admire alicorns too. No, I'm talking about the dampering spell. That's oh, so what I say. Magical fanboy powers. No, no tribe. <laughs> yes, yes. So after bingo, they went to the small pedal boat race. Yay! And in all honesty, I want to see Twilight play this one. Like Iron Wheel should have stopped this. Boo, bet on you, Iron Wheel. I don't know. I mean, Alicorn's is supposed to have the strength of an earth pony and like the best traits of everyone. Did you see Twilight's mom? She just went full force. Yep. So wait, Twilight's got her mom's genetics and Alicorn powers. Oh my gosh, OP. Mary Sue, <laughs> ruined forever. Unsubscribe. <laughs> uh, but still, we get to see the boat race. And um, the race was between uh, Shining Armor and his mom. Unfortunately for Shining Armor... Uh, he's air sick yet seasick. How? He's double sick. This poor guy. He's he's just nothing but pain. Yep. My <laughs> life is agony. <laughs> yep. Uh, but still, going to the next scene is the Pee Wee Princess playtime. Yay! We get to see Flurry Heart having fun with the babies. Actually, can I pause just one sec? We get Iron Will has like a nine pack. I think it was ten. Three, four, five. Yep, ten pack. I'm pretty sure he's a mutation. He's a minotaur. Look, you don't want to know how the actual historical minotaur uh, came to be. Oh, God, no. Was it Zeus? No, but I- indirectly. Uh. But I just like, wow, a 10-pack. I don't, I don't know if that's physically possible. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no comment. Yes, but still... um. Uh, moving on, Pee Wee play date, yay! So Flurry Heart having fun with babies, and the things that she's doing—they're highly questionable. Yeah, I'm, this is my fear with Flurry Heart. She's got all this power, and everyone is just fawning over her, willing to have their children put in rather dangerous situation mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just so they can kiss up to a princess. I, how is Fleury to avoid becoming spoiled or arrogant when when everyone treats her this way? Even Caden seems to recognize this is not smart. <laughs> yes, with her face quizzically saying, Yo, uh, are you sure this is safe? Fleury, don't do that. <laughs> Although I should clarify, I, when I say even Cadence, that makes it sound like Cadence would, is normally a dunderhead. No, Cadence, though, they... The show likes to show her intelligence by having everyone else act stupid, and she just gives them quizzical looks. But that's not making a character smart. It's making everyone else dumb, Mm -hmm. like in Princess Spike. But in this scenario here, you could understand why they're not um, going like, Oh, my baby! Oh, my baby! Honestly, no, I, I... Definitely would hope that their parental instincts would be stronger than their their fanboy and girlisms, but such is not the case. So we're back to the Princess Spike levels of dunderheadedness. Oh yeah, but not dunderheads, I say. But not fully, and we get to see Twilight Sparkle in a Stetson or a cowboy hat for you people who got no idea what a Stetson is. And Applejack would be so proud. But is it animation error if you don't see the horn? Oh, no, Trixie wears uh, her magician's hat and covers up the horn just fine. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, let, let's go with that. So, anywho, yes, Twilight Sparkle is doing a team photo op above Appaloosa. So, yay ha yay ha And, yes, before anything bad happens, um, Kaden says that, hey, um, Flurry Heart is a bit sleepy. She needs to rest. So, yay. They hit to... So, next scene, they go to... Oh, but the... the the look on Cadence's face as she as she leaves the ponies. It's like, what? What is going to happen to my daughter? She is surrounded by fools. Oh, God. You know what? Send her to Sunset. Yes. Send her to Sunset. That will do great. One can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Like, she won't have the magical power, so she'll be limited to what she can do and stuff. So, yay. Right? No? I'm not ready for a yay just yet. <laughs> Oh, but how about jumping off Negra Falls? Because that's what we're getting next. <laughs> Twilight Velvet makes out a lot better than the historical figures I quoted. Yeah, maybe it's a magical barrel, you know? 
Well, it's, I, I love that it's full of water, her mane. I love Twilight's parents in this. Dusklight, he uh, he so admired Twilight's color coordination. You got a sense he's the inspiration for her uh, organizational <laughs> yep. skills. And Velvet, just be the complete adrenaline junkie. No wonder Twilight's a little more adventurous than most. Mm-hmm. And yeah, after the barrel thingy, that little peck on the cheek from Nightlight is very adorable. It's fun to see them as a couple. Even though they had a brief speaking role at the end of uh, the Crystalline in using Twilight and Shining Armor, same voice actors. Uh, it's fun that they're more their own unique characters now. Yeah, And in all honesty, I was a bit disappointed because I would love to see the range that they could do. Like, we all know Tara Strong has a huge range with her voice. And I would like to see... Uh, who is... The VA for Shining Armor again. Give me a second. I think I remember, but I want to be sure. Um, he is da, 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 Andrew Francis. Yes, yeah. I would love to see more range from Andrew Francis, but probably if I go see his IMDb and look at other shows that he's done, probably yay, mm-hmm. yay. But besides the point, um, Twilight Miss the barrel jumping and. Uh, her parents mentioned that hey, um, we tried to wait as long as we could, but yeah, like, there's still no problem. Twilight it couldn't be helped, so yay. And last but not least, at least she gets to see the northern skies, sorry, northern stars. But Iron Will says there's one last thing you need to do, and that's the signing. And yes, the signing is very, very long. It goes full into the evening. And oh, my heart breaks for Twilight. Yes, and also I do highly appreciate uh, Star Trekker here being the last in line to wait for a signature. Oh, again, he's 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 innocent in this. Yeah, kind of naive. True. And Twilight missed the star shoot thing, so she's very frustrated. She's sad, and she breaks down. She she breaks down here, and she accidentally steps on Star Trekker's hoof. And lashes out at him. And yeah. And Cadence sees the problem here. And I think I want you to do this one. Because you notice a positive change for Cadence. So yay. Why don't you take this one? Well, here's the thing. Cadence, I don't think she's a bad character. I think though she's a character who doesn't get to be tested a lot. Uh, Basically, every, every pony jumps to the forefront to help solve the problem for her. And it's very rare where she gets to see things through start to finish. And here in this scene, Cadence gets to talk about the demands of Princess. She gets to be the big sister to Twilight. She gets to be a guide and counselor. And I would really like to see Cadence tackling these uh, these challenges herself, but at least hearing about it, hearing that she's been challenged and that much is asked of her and that she had to learn to define the boundaries, especially when she became a mother, that uh, that speaks a lot to her character. And it's probably the most positive I've seen of her in the show. Granted, creating a love shockwave that expels the changelings from Cantalot is this grand moment, but it is also... It has a staged feeling because it's they're they're only conquering Cantalot because of her wedding. This is her helping Twilight figure out her own life. It's her giving back to the world through coaching Twilight. And that's the other thing. So often, like with the uh, parents who are willing to put their babies at risk to play with Flurry Heart, uh, it's sort of this one way everyone admires Cadence. Well, here's Cadence showing admiration and love for another pony. And I'd like to see more of that, please. Yep, yep. I'd like to see Shining Armor be a reliable captain of the guard, not someone who can, you know, you feel like in a crisis, he, he's he got your back. And I'd like to see Cadence being more accessible to others, less what can the world do for her and more what can she do for the world. Yeah. And also that wingspan, by the way. Have you seen that wingspan? How big are her wings? Well, Flurry Heart got them from somewhere. Yeah, probably, probably. And uh, we go to the Sparkle Cabin. And Twilight Velvet is nursing um, Star Trekker's hoof. And yeah, suddenly Twilight pops in and he's in a panic. Like, I, I need to leave. 
And noops, Twilight stops him there and tells everyone, even only remembers that what she did there was not cool and she's sorry for it. And let's do something off the record. And everybody's shocked, including Star Trekker. <laughs> I was going to say including Flurry Heart. There's this screenshot cap on the Wikipedia. <laughs> Everyone's got fa- these stunned faces. And even Flurry Heart's going to uh, say, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. I, I, I didn't know this. But yes. But Star Trek goes, who are you and what did you do to Twilight Sparkle? Which, given that we're co- that we Twilight has been abducted by changelings, actually, that we should ask that more often. If someone's acting bizarre, why are they not immediately tackled and scanned as a changeling? <laughs> the bug menace is upon us. Okay, yeah, this is a- this episode's post changeling reformation, mm. but still, it's chrysalis <laughs> attack. Uh, but still, but still, they have ice cream and yay, they have fun. Ice cream eating is fun and whatnot. Iron Will pops up, wanting to promote. Something again, and yeah, Star Trek stands up for Twilight, and I won't say fail. Okay, he fails, but still, he's a Earth pony dealing with a Minotaur. Yeah, I- I'll give him that. And Twilight just pops in and says that as much as I enjoy entertaining you all, I actually came to this trip wanting to have some R and R with the family. And not really do this. And everybody just questions, Um, if you wanted to do this, why did you agree? And Iron Will says something to the fact of, uh, if you're not satisfied, no, mo- uh, no money back guarantee, and jumps off the ship. He learned his lesson from Fluttershy. He learned the wrong lesson <laughs> from Fluttershy. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, the the whole no means no is still... Very awkward. Yep. Oh, but still, but still. But now, now to find out he learned his the lesson he learned is no refunds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no refunds. And I have to say, like Shining Armor just mentions that, huh? That guy's pushy and um whatnot, but he sure is prepared. Somehow jumping off the ship with a parachute on standby. Huh. Well, you know, you gotta be prepared when you're not a likable person. Yeah, yeah true, true. And Twilight and Cadence talk about something I'd forgot. And when they reach to the end, uh, the family does a play or an adorable something about the stars thingy. I I forgot. Like the Northern Stars with Twilight Velvet, Shining Armor, and Furry Heart being the stars, which is cool. And Velvet here is talented. She's carrying herself and the two others including a full-grown male pony. Like, that is some talent there. And yet even that gets shining armor a little queasy. Mm-hmm. Yay. Poor guy. And episode ends. Well, it, it ends on this beautiful shot, but there's this lingering question. Who's driving this thing? Um, Autopilot? I think autopilot just maintains course and speed and is heading directly to Canterlot. They're going to impale upon the princess's castle. <laughs> I, I, is there like a Walter Mitty pony on the plane and or on the Zeppelin? Probably. It, it could be that autopilot, you know, from um, Aeroplane, that one classic um, comedy show. Remember the one? I'm oh oh I'm just, yeah great. If there's a Les, if there's a Leslie Nielsen pony, just want you all to know we're counting on you. Uh, and episode ends. <clears throat> So, before we get into the final thoughts, i like to point out that Iron Will mentioned Pony Princess. So, if Twilight and Cadence weren't available, he could have gotten Luna and Celestia. But how, how would he rope them in, is the question. Yes, I would love to see that. That'll be very interesting to see. But now, on to final thoughts. What do you think, Silva? Oh, I had a lot of fun watching this. I mean, you get the, the Sparkle family gets to be fleshed out in this marvelous way. And you get a great showing for Cadence. Probably, like I say, probably her best in the series. Shining Armor takes it on the chin. And that's disappointing. Because, you know, I want to like him. I want to just know he's competent. Or he's reliable. And that's a little harder. But that's the only real con. I will say this also highlights the gulf between 
the comics pre issue 50 or issue 51, I should say, and the show, because the last time we saw iron oil in the franchise before this episode was the siege of the crystal empire, where he had turned full traitor, assaulted the main six, aided the, the evil changelings and nearly brought about the doom of Equestria. And he was a, basically a fugitive thereafter. Here he's able just to be the captain of a of a Zeppelin airship. And you're like, okay, I think you can just sort of chuck that story into the non-canon uh realm. Yep, which it is. Which is unfortunate. There was a lot there were parts of the Siege of the Crystal Empire I really enjoyed. And we'd like to see explored further. Oh yeah, like I would highly want to see uh Sombra and what was her name again? I forgot. Uh Radiant Yeah, Hope. Radiant Hope touring around looking for the one piece and whatnot, but still um we didn't get that. That's one of the utterly most disappointing aspect of that series because uh, what we're on chapter or we're on issue sixty three now, was it? Yep, we're pretty far along. Yeah, and we'll and we still haven't gotten any news of those two. Especially a reform Sombra. Like, wouldn't you want to see more of him? Well we I can't talk about that without going into major spoilers, yeah. so we'll hold off on true, that. True, 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 true. But is that all Silver? Uh, yep, that's it for me. Mm. And as for me, I enjoyed this episode. This episode spoke to me in a way that I can reflect myself upon Star Trekker here. And how do I put this? I try not to be that overly enthusiastic fanboy like Star Trekker here. And I somehow felt his anguish when Twilight was mad at him. Yeah, it's understandable. Like, you were really up close and personal and Twilight didn't say anything about it. So he thought it was okay and whatnot. But still, this episode was a lot of fun. And I don't know. I want to see more of Star Trekker in the future. Like, how he is now and whatnot. It'll be fun to see. You know, you know what I mean? Yes. But other than that, the lesson here, like, knowing where to draw the line and whatnot. The characters here were all good and whatnot. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed it. Excellent. And those are my thoughts. So... Uh, what are we going to do next week, Silver? Well, we're going to continue the roll-in with uh, episode reviews because uh, at the time we're recording this, Season 8 has has just started up and we're wrapping up Season 7. Yeah, like we were... Well, I thought we could have done this in time, but nah, like it seems that we need to rush. It's not really that we really, really need to rush, but still, it would be nice to cover something new once in a while. Yeah, we'll get there. Honestly, I I say live in the moment, and just enjoy what's what's before you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's there's a fallacy of appealing to the novel, the new, just because it's new. Mm -hmm, true that, true that. But I think one of the reasons why we want to cover season as fast as possible is because we have a stack going on here, like not counting some of the comics, the mainline comics the Equestria Girls, and also Season 8. Like, I mentioned four things there that we need to kind of get out of the way. So, yeah, we kind of need to clean out our, whatchamacallit, to-do list. Our backlog? Yes, backlog. That's one way to put it, too. So, yeah, um, we'll cover that one. Well, we'll, we'll cross that road when we'll uh, come to it. But as for now, more Season 7 reviews till we are done with it. And our next review will be Secrets and Pies. Yep. And if I'm not mistaken, Josh Hamilton, he's a new guy, right? I think so, but I don't honestly track Writers. the writing staff as closely. I'm quirky like this. Yeah, because the only reason why I brought it up, because of your recent review, uh, what was it called again? Uh, Wonder Rainbow, Rainbow uh, the one you did with Dusty. Oh, Newbie Dash. Newbie Dash, yeah. Because he mentioned something about writers, or the writers being totally new, and I never noticed that. Well, like I say, there's there's the story behind the story. Mm -hmm. And I guess we don't really notice it. Eh, well, uh, but maybe we'll do better next time. Hmm, who knows? But that will be next week's thing to do and discuss. 
So anywho, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted contents, and a thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker, Cat, Starstream, myself, Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You have been really kind to me. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I am Cecil Raquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Oh my god, Silver, if I meet you in person, I hope I don't fanboy too hard. Good, you won't fanboy. Come on, you've, you've heard enough of my bizarre humor that you'll know. Good golly, this guy's a weirdo. I know, so that's why the fanboy is strong. <laughs> what? Not crazy.